All right, call to order at 701. Everyone can please rise with a bunch of allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in the republic, and justice for all. Be seated. Item four is proclamations and presentations. We have three that will be read into the record tonight. There was a presentation, I believe, for the, co the Veterans Coffee House earlier today. I'd like to read them into the record for the meeting. So the first is for H. Gregory Forbush. So H. Gregory Forbush, United States Marine Corps, is a Talon veteran that is being recognized for his six years of service in the Talon Veterans Recognition Commission and to honor and memorialize those citizens of Holland who have returned from active duty in the military. His duties on the commission were as follows. To prepare an appropriate listing of Holland residents currently serving in the armed forces to be displayed in the town hall. To work in conjunction with the town clerk to create and maintain an honor roll for display in the town hall of those Holland residents who have served in the past conflicts and to recommend to the town council the appropriate means for commemorating individuals, including but not limited to the commissioning of suitable memorial structures, to develop appropriate honor or memorial protocols for individuals from the town returning from active service in the armed forces, H. Greg Forbush has performed all these duties at the highest level while serving his fellow top veterans of Talland. Now, therefore, I, Stephen Jones, on behalf of the citizens of Talland, acknowledge the six years of service that H. Gregory Forbush provided to the town of Talland to enhance the recognition and importance of our Talland veterans. In witness here, whereof I have here to set my hand and cause the seal of town of Talland be affixed on this 13th day of December 2022. The second citation we have before us is for Robert D. Lincoln. So Robert D. Lincoln, USA Army Green Beret, 10th Special Forces, is a Holland veteran that is being recognized for his nine years of service on Holland Veterans Recognition Commission as secretary and to honor and memorialize those citizens of Holland who have returned from active duty in the military. His duties on this commission were as follows, to prepare an appropriate listing of town residents who are currently serving in the armed forces to be displayed in town hall, to work in conjunction with the town clerk to create and maintain an honor roll for display in the town hall of those town residents who have served in past conflicts and to recommend to the town council the appropriate means for commemorating individuals, but including, including but not limited to the commissioning of suitable memorial structures. To develop appropriate honor or memorial protocols for individuals from the town returning from active service in the armed forces, Bob Lincoln has performed all of these duties at the highest level while serving as fellow veterans of Talland. Now, therefore, I, Stephen Jones, on behalf of the citizens of Talland, acknowledge the nine years of service that Robert D. Lincoln provided to the town of Talland to enhance the recognition and importance of our Talland veterans. In wit witness whereof, I appear to set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Talland to be affixed on this 13th day of December 2022. And our third citation is a citation honoring Mary Ann Trapp. To recognize Mary Ann Trapp for her years of service helping her husband, Richard E. Tapp, former Talon Veteran Recognition Commission Chairman, for the past 14 years, they maintained the listing of all Talon veterans in the armed forces displayed on the Talon Town Hall Wall of Honor. All these veterans were vetted to be honored and memorialized citizens of Talon who have returned from active military duty. Mary Ann and Richard worked with the Talon Town Clerk to create and maintain this Talon honor roll that is presently displayed in the Talon Town Hall of Honor. They recommend those veterans to the Town Council for the appropriate means of commemorating these individuals. Mary Ann Tapp has performed all of these duties at the highest level while assisting her veteran husband in the Veterans Hall of Honor. Now, therefore, I, Stephen Jones, on behalf of the citizens of Talon, acknowledge the assistance of that Mary Ann Tapp creates the Veterans Recognition Commission for Talon veterans. In witness whereof, I have here to set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Talon to be affixed on its 13th day of December, 2022. And just again, I want to thank town staff for organizing these in pretty quick order, working with the Kern Maynard and the ERC to get them brought over so they can be presented earlier today. With that, we'll move to item five, public petitions, communications, and public participation on any subject in the jurisdiction of the town council with a two minute limit. If you are on Zoom, you can hit the raise hand function or star nine if you're on a mobile device. Or if you're in the audience, you can approach the table and state your name and address for the record. Uh, with that, we have a hand raised on the Zoom screen for Claudette Morris. Oh, you are still muted, Claudette. Just a heads up. 
Hi everyone, um, Claudette Morehouse, 89 Merlot Way in Tallinn. Um, I just want to um, say I had sent an email in a few days ago um, regarding the contaminated wells. Um, I have not received any kind of response or um, uh, notification of anything. So I want to read my email into record so that it doesn't get lost in a correspondence report stating, oh, we received an email regarding wells. So my email said that I was writing in regards to the state legislature hearing that occurred a couple weeks ago regarding the grant loan money application for clean drinking water. This was an important step to plead our case in maybe being recipients of some much, much needed funds. But my question is, is where were you? Only Tammy Nutrio was there as our state rep, but not one person from town and municipal departments were there to represent us on this issue. No one from the Water Commission, no one from town council, no one from the town manager's office or the town manager himself. Other towns had multiple members speaking on behalf of their town, but not Tallinn. My utter disappointment is an understatement. This is, we have been strong along long enough. Your absence at this hearing sends us a message that this has fallen to a non-priority issue. I have been told by the town manager that this is a work in progress, looking at what will be done in future applications of road salt. That's all fine and good, but sorry, but the work in progress I'm interested in is what you're going to do to our already contaminated wells. That grant and loan, would have been huge to bring in public water and no one was there. I wouldn't wish this way of life on anyone, living out of jugs of water, which we do appreciate getting, but because your friends and neighbors don't have potable drinking water for six long years now. Tallinn residents have been living without a basic human need and in a negative quality of life situation. It gets talked about and then crickets. I think Tallinn missed a huge opportunity by not attending this hearing and how much longer can and should we endure. I very much would appreciate that this issue get resolved soon or as at the very least a solid plan moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Claudette. That's actually real. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak? Do you would like to do so you can raise your hand with the raise hand function or star nine. All right, going once, going twice. We are on item six, which is the hearing items. So item 6.1 is consideration of a resolution for supplementary appropriations for three bridge improvement projects to be funded 100% by state and federal funds. So you can wait to hear Brian if you want to give a quick summary. Um, so we, we have some, it says bridges, but really it's um, culverts, uh, but uh, we're, we're getting some uh, funding from uh, state and federal, really it's federal funded through the state, I believe if I'm accurate, uh, and in, the three are down in the um, industrial park area, the bubble and such, uh, down that way. Beth, do you have anything else? Yeah. And it's 100% reimbursement, which is uh, usually, usually the town has to pay the 20% for the design. So it's kind of a good situation for us. And my understanding is my, that uh, the bridges won't be done until 2024. Because they're going to design phase and public hearings and everything. Any other questions from council members? Seeing that I entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. So by Councilman Murray, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Nuccio or Councilman Nuccio. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is unanimous, but the public hearing is now open. If anyone from the public would like to speak on the hearing item, welcome to do so. All right, going once, going twice, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Lubitschek. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is it unanimous? Any further discussion on the resolution? Just good work. Glad to see we're able to get 100% funding and even get that 20% design match, yeah. match with the state. So, all right. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution as outlined in 6.1. Second. 
Moved by Councilman Murray. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Lugio. Being up for discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is unanimous. That brings us to 7A reports of boards and committees responsible to the council. Uh, so last week, actually on the 8th, actually, <laughs> sorry, it feels like the weeks are going by. Um, we met for a special meeting for the virus subcommittee. Uh, we did vote unanimously to approve uh, the vendor for or the uh, bid for the firehouse. It was the lowest bid, but I met all the parameters, CHA, and for, uh, for reference checks. I think it was Lawrence Bernoli. Sorry, that's my name. So that was the NFC approved. We are canceling this week's meeting on the fifth or the next week on the 15th. And we have established our uh, 2023 schedule. So if there's any questions regarding the firehouse project, you can certainly ask them here. I think the minutes were just published today. So we're going to be having a contract signing on the 22nd. Okay. Look forward to moving this project along. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, that brings us to 7B, reports of town council liaisons. Uh, I'll start with my last council Murray. Sure, I attended the Board of Education meeting on the uh, November 30th. Uh, there was a robust discussion about next year's uh, school calendar, whether school's gonna start before or after Labor Day. So if anyone wishes to give their input, I'm sure the board is uh, being flooded with a uh, pair two an opinion one way or the other on that issue. Um, the board uh, made some administrative updates to names on some accounts and programs. Um, they discussed updating a few board of ed policies to be consistent with re recent state law changes. They approved their goals. And the only item that really touched upon town council was a mention that the board of ed did make requests uh, for the capital improvement plan, which we got today, so I'm sure there's board action in here. And uh, the Agriculture Commission was canceled, doesn't meet again until February. All right, sounds good. Councilor Khan, uh, EDC, EDC uh, met uh, last week, and then we talked about empty spaces in Holland and the listing and uh, about the uh, housing. And, <laughs> Basically, that's what they did, and that's what they do all the time. So, that, uh, thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Regan. Yes, planning and zoning met last night. Uh, two agenda items. The first one was uh, farm cidery discussion to include breweries. Uh, any regulations around around those and, uh, for anybody who'd want to uh, open a brewery or a cidery? Uh, very extensive discussion. A lot of detail will be included in the minutes when they get posted. Second item was a discussion of uh, the POCD and its implementation. And again, a very extensive discussion on that. So anybody who has any interest would be, uh, I would I would direct you to the minutes to get more detail on that. All right, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. I had the Conservation Commission last week. They had a pretty lengthy discussion about event registration and any insurance or liability issues that they might have in case of them were to be injured. So I think they're looking for some advice from town hall and the town attorney about having a form and what its applicability would be. Um, they discussed the forest management plan. Uh, they're expecting a revenue of $8,000 from the harvest on the RCI conservation area. Um, I believe based off of prior conversations would go back into their revolving fund for future uh, harvest plans and conservation area management plans. So. And that was it for me. The Water Commission meets next Monday, the 19th. Yeah. Right. Councilman Lucia? Um, I had a PCC meeting. Um, they were pretty busy trying to get everything up for the tree lighting and all of that. So making final decisions and such. And um, obviously, very successful. So, you know, um, that's it. All right. Councilman Lucia? So I say there was a lot of um, a lot of young kids there, yeah. like a lot of looks like a lot of young families. So yeah. yeah, there always is. Yeah, yeah so that was really like, nice. But they yeah. once again did a great job. Yeah. Um, it's that guy in the red suit, you know, the guy <laughs> him out. So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's quoted by the police. <laughs> yeah, hold up and put like that. <laughs> um, so John and I were at the Tom and Hope Task Force on December 5th. That was a pretty quick meet in. Um, basically, improving next year's calendar, 
and then talked about next month they're gonna it's a two-step thing right john about presenting the wayland um results and going from there so those are going to be at the regular um, mental health meetings and then you see um, And then last night, the, rec, um, the advisory board, Tallinn Recreation Advisory Board met last night, <clears throat> talked about um, all the good stuff they were doing. They had between 500 and 600 people at the Halloween um, haunted house here in the town hall. And they talked about some of the capital improvements, which again, like Katie said, we just got budget, which I believe um, Bruce talked about the replacement of the turf field, construction of the pickleball court, and a new multi-purpose field were submitted to the town manager. Um, and that's, and I believe the winter program went live last night, I think Bruce said. So that should include the new um, breaks for people when they sign up from the upper fund. So I think he's pretty excited to see what those numbers are. Have they been advertising that time? I haven't I seen it. I saw a Facebook post on it recently, but I don't know if it's been e blasted, so it might be good he to get that out. I asked him, I, don't, I haven't seen the book that usually comes in, and I was looking last night. The fall program is not um, up yet, but he said it should be up there soon. So I did question that. Um, and then next week, we should be meeting, uh, our press subcommittee should be meeting. Um, I assume there's going to be a whole bunch of capital items on that. There are some, yes. Yeah. So, but that's all I have now. That sounds good. That brings us to eight new business. So, eight point one is a consideration of a resolution to declare various equipment obsolete from the Board of Education. And it looks like we have with us Dr. Willett tonight, as well as any questions. Otherwise, I'll kick it off to Brian. Uh, no, that's it's all stuff that uh, Dr. Willett has said is of no value, uh, and they want to uh, get rid of it. Any questions specifically to him? Right. Are there any questions from council members regarding the list? If you have the packet, it's on page 17. All right. Being none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the resolution outlined in 8.1. So moved. Is there a second? No second. Second by Council Minuccio. All those in favor or any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is me, Edmus. Brings us to 8.2, which is consideration of a resolution for the 2022 Steve Grant Award for the renovation or replacement of the community tennis courts in the amount of $500,000. And I believe Brian said this is kind of one of the final checks for uh, being able to process the assistance agreement. Yes, this is just a resolution authorizing me to sign off on behalf of the town so we can move forward uh, with the project. All right. Are there any questions from council members? All right, seeing none, I can make a motion to approve the draft list of resolution as outlined in 8.2. I'll make the motion. So moved by Councilman Munichak. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Murray. You know, for the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is unanimous. 8.3 is a consideration of a resolution to approve the necessary funds to ratify CSEA, SEIU, Local 2001, collective bargaining agreement for the period date dated July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. Well, this began in June of uh, 2022 negotiations um, with town staff, town attorney, our labor attorney, um, and the union. I believe um, that it's a fair result with positives for both sides. Um, here to Mike and I are here to entertain any questions if there are any. Are there any questions from council members regarding the resolution? Just thank you for all your hard work. I'm glad to hear that the union members are happy and management's happy. That's seems like a good outcome. Concur. Thank you. As well, and give our regards to Pat, so he can make it tonight, but obviously his longstanding relationship with the town has been beneficial for, for us, so. I will, do, I will do that. Thank you. With that, I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution is at 8.3. Is there a second? No, oh, okay. All right, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of saying aye. 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 All right, that is unanimous, which brings us to 8.4. Considerate, consideration of resolution amending the membership of the Firehouse Subcommittee 
Uh, I shot over an email to Mr. Foley about all the good work Megan had been doing and communicating with Bev, and I recommended since they were added to the building committees for the HVAC projects that are pending, that they, we amend the, the makeup of the subcommittee to include them as well. They could also fill in for Bev and that they were for Alex since they were pretty closely together. We can follow that. And also had voting power. <laughs> so this makes sense. She's doing a lot of the uh, work yeah. with it uh, to begin with the assistance of Bev and a great learning opportunity. She was not here when this committee was uh, put together. Uh, it, it just makes sense all around. She's uh, fine with the additional work and certainly hasn't shied away from uh, one stitch of work yet. So um, that's where we stand. Right. Are there any other questions or comments from council members? All right, seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the resolution outlined in 8.4. Motion made by Councilman Lucio. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Councilman Yudicek. You know, for the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 This is unanimous. Brings the 8.5, which is a review and discussion of the town council goals that were set on December 28, 2021. So now it's your talking chance, Brian. There's definitely a lot there that you've written down and shared with us in the community. So uh there's so these 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 goals were created uh, while I was a state employee uh, and not even considering um, a change of career at that point. So, uh, but I, I'm very uh, happy uh, with all of them. If you'd like, would you like me to run through all of them as fast as I can? I can just give a brief summary and then we can uh, bounce back and forth if there are specific questions. Okay. Um, so, so it, let's uh, right out of the gate on, on, a, on a strategic plan. I agree with uh, the need uh, for that in the town. We'll look at the, the mission and vision statements, why they're important. I believe actions are a lot better than signing on to some uh, credo that is virtually toothless. Um, I, I believe in action and leadership, but I also understand the need uh, for that as well in, in established credibility. The strategic plan is a little different. I, I think it's uh, something something that we should look at. I, I discussed it uh, uh, with Mr. Wilkinson um, on a couple of occasions, and it's something that I can I can look at and and try to look at what other towns have done well um, and, and pick up and learn from that. But happy to move with that. Um, employee retention uh, it's it's you know it's difficult in an organization of this size. You have you and and you know we have some very very long time. Uh, employees here with with incredible knowledge that is difficult to impart all that on one sitting in this room right now. Uh, they will not be here forever, but we are trying uh, specifically uh, with Bev to to impart her knowledge onto someone new. There are others uh, that are going to be uh, not so difficult. Some departments have great. Um, we have a deep bench, and others not so much. But uh, we're working on that. Uh, we've done a lot, as you guys are aware. The um, the staff raises. And some uh, retention. I've I've watched um, in Hartford. I had the benefit of watching the talent retention uh, just be not handled very well, and to lose some great people uh, as a result of that, and, and not go well for the administration. I believe ARPA's moving along uh, fine. We've we've I we have been responsible again, having the benefit of seeing how other cities have done bad with uh, grant spending based on votes. We are doing it based on it with a committee. Um, and I think we've, we've done some good things and some more things coming that, uh, that'll be good for uh, us fiscally. Uh, our AAA bond rating speaks for itself. Uh, Lisa does a great job. Our, our policies uh, really seem to be the strong point just through we have very strong financial uh, management policies uh, that really help us get through that. Um, regional, the IT regional stuff, I'd love to explore other regional opportunities. It's something we take slow, but the IT couldn't work better, couldn't be working better. Um, and the the dog pound, we've actually uh, engaged in some regional efforts that have been uh, to a profit. Um, you know, you look at the, the you guys, you, you'll have the capital improvements plan if you don't already have it. Uh, some of the things that I'm looking at is, is you know, it seems that there's been spending habits over the years that haven't been um, great or um, more investigation could be done, uh, and I'm trying to do that. Uh, I certainly have done it with some of the fire apparatus. I will do that with. Um, I did a granular with DPW. I'm not the person to decide. I would. I would look to get a consultant report uh, to move forward there to see uh, how many trucks. I've been told. You know, that I've heard from citizens that there might be too many, too much apparatus. I've heard that we need more from others. Um, I'd love to dig in on that and, and really find out. But again, that would be something uh, that I would want. I'd look to hire a consultant this year uh, to do. The fire, the fire stations, you know where we are. I provide an elaborate report. Please uh, look to those 
uh, in my in the, the goals that I turned into you for the specifics on where we stand with the fire stations. Um, needless to say, we just I, I decided when I got here to slow down. Uh, I wasn't I'm not sure of the exact uh, need for it. The foundation issues, uh, the crumbling foundation issues, has gone I believe very well for the town. Uh, just with a, a, an issue bubbling up with the condo complex down behind Johnny Appleseed. There, I can't think of the name it off the top of my head. Uh, with a bunch of those coming in now, but uh, we have oh, yes. thank you. Uh, we have others. Uh, we have others coming off the books. So uh, it, it really seems like our, our region's moving towards the recovery, thanks to the great efforts. We just have to make sure we maintain support uh, for that uh, at, at a state level for, I would say, a decade or so, uh, or longer, depending on how this goes. Um, If you want, we can uh, break up and let uh, council members ask questions. If you want, we can bounce back to. That's stuff. fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I can talk all night if you'd like. Any council members have your hand raised? Yeah. Um, so when I read through this, I had a couple of things, just a couple of um, points that I wanted to kind of get a little bit more information on. With respect to what you just said on um, getting a consultant to look at the DPW um, fleet and all of that, one of the things that's on the ARPA is uh, the heavy duty dump trucks used for plowing and park maintenance. So I'm I'm wondering if there is appetite right now to put that off until we get the um, consultant review to see. It's close, Tammy. Um, it's close. I, I don't want to cut. The last place I wouldn't want to cut is plowing. Let me put it that way. Of all the of all the functions, um, as it, it requires all of us to obtain our basic needs and for emergency services to respond. Uh, we know we have twelve routes. Um, we know what our staffing is. I'd have to look at that a little closer, and I'm glad that you reminded me. So I will for our, our meeting next week. I I did not bring my folder with me where I have my notes and crayon on. on I mean, you know the specifics, <laughs> just you know high level. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, and then in uh, evaluation of the public safety needs, yep. your last sentence is one that is intriguing to me. And I'm wondering if you can maybe elaborate on it a little bit. You said, um, I believe a regional approach is something to watch for in the coming decade. Yeah. Uh, you're specifically talking between for the, um, I don't know if that's the fire ambulance and the, the state police. Um, I know you looked at the 2018 consultant report, yep. which was pretty inclusive in how much it would cost to have our own police force and all that other good stuff. Um, and also looked at partnering with possibly Vernon or Coventry, which again was a significant uptick in cost. Um, I think the state police do a good job, but I'm wondering what you mean um, by a regional approach might be something to watch for. Uh, the, the, the price of the state police fluctuates, fluctuates greatly. Um, while we are very fortunate here to have a resident state trooper that is, um, and, I, and I've seen many or most of them, the, one of the best. Yes, um, I, I do think the future, I read the report. I disagree with much of it. I believe my, the thumb was on the scale for that in regards to it slanted very heavy towards retaining that uh, resident trooper. I don't know about the cost of the savings. I can tell you this. I've been here six months. I haven't talked to a sergeant or a lieutenant. I don't get a crime map. I don't know where crimes are. I don't have any information on anything to evaluate any sort of crime patterns, uh, anything like that. Um, so, and, and when I where I came from, you know, a weekly ComStat meeting on every single thing that you, you, we just don't have that. And I don't think that's a state, I don't think that's a resident trooper issue. I think that's a more data and crime analysis issue at a, at a higher level among one of the other things. But I, I cannot tell you if we have burglary patterns, where they are, where they've been, where our numbers were 10 years ago, where they are today, where they were last month, where the stolen cars are. I just, I have no evaluation of that. I don't know if anyone evaluates that. Um, so I would look to other options and cost, obviously, and in, in, in public safety. It's more of a philosophical approach. That is not a year one thing for me, uh, but it's something to consider. Uh, down the road, I, you know, there it's an expensive police service that we pay for. I don't know what it'd be. I do not think we should have our own police department here in the town. Certainly, we can't afford it. Um, but I would look towards sharing with others the same way. It. I don't. I don't. I. I don't think we could be any happier 
as a, as the town staff with the IT we share with South Windsor. Um, we could look for that in the fire, we could look for that in the ambulance, we could look for that in the police. So, uh, so certainly not anything I would turn a blind eye to. So I'm gonna ask a really stupid question. Have you asked for that information? Sure. And I get that block, same block every, this is the amount of calls, this, is, calls. It, this is it, yeah. Which I think is kind of the thing that we get from the fire department also, is literally just like, a, you know, here's the stat. So I think it's worth it to kind of push and say, this is what we would like to see from the services that we're providing. Knowing knowing the answer to that though, where I came from there, I know there's not gonna be a professional comm stat package produced for a town, which I would like to see, which everyone would like to see. You know, here's a map of the town. Here's a star where all the car breaks were in the last year. Here's a star where, you know, a heat map, you know, it helps direct services. It helps direct patrol. Where are the, where are the, all the speeding complaints, the highest amount? Um, there's just a way to professionalize it. Um, yeah, I think there's probably room there for that. Um, in the, in same thing on the fire side, I know when John provides his stats, um, I started pushing probably about a year or so ago to get the mutual aid numbers because while mutual aid is a great thing when we're mutual aiding every call in Vernon or 90% of calls in this town or that town, the town and taxpayers are paying for fire services Concur. for other towns. And it seemed like we, I told you I've had conversations with other town managers um, yeah. where they said, we don't need to buy this or that because Tallinn has it and they come. Yeah. Um, obviously. Or that, Tallinn will sell it and we can still use it for 10 more years. Obviously that's something I looked at almost immediately when I got here and I'm trying to remedy. Okay, so that's I, I'm interested in that public safety is um, to include I'm leaning on other town managers to and as is John he doesn't I promise you he doesn't love responding uh, to certain towns for certain things uh, he's made that clear uh, so I am leaning on other towns to pick up um, and without naming anybody specifically um, in ambulance so okay all right um, that's good to know. So if there's going to be continued work on that, I'd definitely be interested in, and I think for sure we would probably all be interested in hearing on that. Um, on the crumbling foundation, that's what we got up to. Um, I'm familiar with the bill that's, rec that's talked about on here, the act uh, concerning the crumbling foundation, concrete foundations. I'm interested in what the town, because Talon kind of drove that bill. Yep. Um, Jason was a main uh, touch fire for that one there. And there's I want to make sure we understand what this is because in here, this is not what necessarily came forward. This says um, due to faulty foundations that were still receiving reductions, even though they had settled lawsuits um, and their insurance companies. So that piece I think is pivotal that we understand if there are, are a certain amount of homes in town that have filed insurance policies and gotten an insurance payout, but are still on the rolls. The technicality and the issue here is the assessments are based off the value of the resale price of the home. So I want to understand what you guys are, how you, how it's impacting the town, how many do you think it is, and um, what's the plan of action for that piece? Uh, and the, the, I think the plan of action, let me go work backwards, is uh, I think at a legislative level of policy change, not allowing people to make that insurance claim, take the money and not fix it and not and, and keep riding off the tax break at you know I think you explained it about like if an average house three thousand dollars a year or something is is what it costs us a handful of houses at best is is how it was explained to me but obviously created frustration for him as it is a um loophole that's exposed itself an un, un, unpredicted loophole okay if you have any kind of data on what I'm that impact is I'm happy to get that for you okay and then that brings you up to uh, water concerns. Unless anybody else has any other questions on all those others. You're okay. all You're all Listen, listen he didn't go there yet. I, I have more <laughs> questions, but he hasn't like that. I don't know if you want me to continue going or. Sure, sure. All right. Um, on the historic district, people with disabilities on there. Um, as you mentioned in here, we had the meeting, we looked at it and all of that. We talked about um, the preliminary financial commitment. Can you give us a little more update on? the kind of plan of action. Where are we in a plan of action for deciding what we're going to do there? We've talked a little bit in here about, you know, there's this, there's that, but we've been missing and that in for about six years. That many years. <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope to end that. Um, right now, we're, we're heading towards putting a sidewalk on the tall and green, not taking anyone's property, not not take, getting rid of the stone, not adding a separate 
uh, sidewalk to put to make the green more accessible. We've talked tonight about uh, the great events that we've had on the green. I want um, everybody to be able to come on the green, the grass, and enjoy it um, whenever they want. Uh, I will work. There's legalities. We're working with an attorney uh, with, with uh, Rich Conti. He's done some research already. I don't know if you've seen it in the, uh, if you get the bills, but um, he's done some research. We want him to do a little bit more uh, on the ship side of things, but uh, we we look to put a walkway down the green. We haven't decided on material or, or uh, whether concrete or otherwise at this point, but it's it's probably leaning that way, but I would like a cobblestone uh, look to it. But again, that's, that's my own personal. You can do like the, the, the um stands. Yeah, I'm looking for. Um, we I want to incorporate the veterans in there. I've I've walked the green uh, with the People with Disabilities Commission uh, chair. I've walked the green with the veterans um, with Pern, Mr. Maynard, uh, and that is the direction we're having. My it's not in the CIP yet. Uh, my my goal is to have it engineered share it, and then possibly get it uh, through our phone. We did the cross farms walkways, which are extensive and way more technical than a straight run mm -hmm. down the green, as you saw, twisting up hills and such, uh, to ADA. Uh, we did that for 90000 We had budgeted to 200 so we got it in under budget. I would have loved to have used that savings, but that would have been improper. Right. So, got to read the uh, but that'll give you an idea uh, of ballpark of the cost of load. We did stamps. It would be uh, obviously a, I don't know, a lot more, but it's significant cost more. Uh, we tell our kids. I'm sure we can kind of just go up there and you know run <laughs> the thing over it. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> so that's that's where we stand with that. Okay. Um, and then the next one on here, you just kind of touched on that. And I was hoping you can give us a little bit more on um, what work the, the engineering design was complete for the. Um, the other recreational areas and stuff like that. So where are we in the process of the review of all of the recreational areas and um, making them more ADA accessible? Oof. Um, I'm gonna make you work for it. We did well. <laughs> remember, the, remember the Girl Scouts gave, yeah. us, gave us a list. Um, when I say we, I mean Scott Lappin and his staff were able to, to hit off a lot of the low hanging fruit. Our next step is to re-meet uh, with the Girl Scouts um, my thought was to have them, they, they, they did an assessment of all the, the parks in town, the recreational areas, but they didn't do it um, with the green. So my thought was maybe have them do that as well. Um, just a thought, but our next step is to meet with them and, and prioritize. Okay. Um, but the town as a whole is really starting to push that needle in a positive direction yeah. in making everything more accessible. I appreciate that. Um, the next one that I had notes on here is the under balancing open spaces, re residential and economic development. Having been on here, John and I, the longest here, we were a part of this four town initiative that has been many years since it's been going on. And now we're on the second name change and I still have seen nothing from this committee that is benefiting the town of Tallinn for the amount of money that we, we spent. So, I'm highly encouraging the idea that if anybody comes forward for more money, there is a big review on what exactly is Tallinn getting. Because other than, like I said, now a second name change. Uh, I would concur with you on that. Um, I have great faith in our planner, Dave, however, um, but I would I would ask him his thoughts on it and, uh, and follow his guidance, but agree, uh, what do we get? Uh, and then the last thing that I have is on B there under the town budget. Your last line, I intend to use my communication infrastructure and experience mm. to facilitate a transparent budget process in 2023. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. Well, the budget process, not only is it hell, but we get very little engagement from people until it either fails or passes. And then, you know, it's... And it's the same five people complaining about the same five things and starting the same, you know, rigmarole about what we're failing miserably at for this month and then succeeding wildly at in January. So how do, well, teach me, everyone, what are you going to do? 
I was going to say the same thing to you. Uh, <laughs> I have not been through a budget process yet. However, you know, I'm not shy. Yeah. Uh, I do have some uh, communications ability and I have a established, I brought in an established social media footprint uh, with me, uh, to which I use to my advantage. And I, and, and I would use that there. I would like to add, you saw the report that Lisa provided, uh, uh, the financial update. Yeah. That's another thing that we do for the, the transparency. I, I just, I'm just, as a side note, I did not put that in there. But as we work our way through the process, I have, if you guys have ideas on how I can communicate, I'm happy to use them and then use my infrastructure. And when I say infrastructure, my social media footprint uh, to all of our advantage. So what we've found in the past, let's three to especially here, what we found in the past is we pretty much got, I don't even know what haven't we tried. We've tried e blessed we've tried social media, we've tried meetings, we've tried uh, notifications, we've tried what like mailings, everything, and it's a pretty disengaged populace until tax books come. So I know we've come to Jen, Steve, Steve and I had multiple conversations <laughs> about how do we engage, how do we get people more active involved in this? And the heat of it's coming upon us now. So it's another thought I have uh in that watching it from afar is it became fairly polarized as well. Oh yeah. And so I would continue my approach of trying not to polarize, trying to stay in balance with everybody and smooth things off and take some of the thorns away because they got fairly thorny as we all witnessed um, the first time around. That's by no fault of ours. That's by where we are as a society. But I think we're turning the bend, uh, all of us uh, in really de-escalating, uh, especially here in town. I know with, between the Democratic Town Commission, Republic, Republican Town Committee, I'm sorry. Um, uh, we have an event coming up together. It's going to be a fundraising event. It's going to be a fun event. And it's really about togetherness. Um, but I think if we communicate well, show, try not to be polarizing, uh, I think we will have some success uh, this year. And I'll do everything I can uh, to communicate exactly that, um, or as best I can to communicate at a level. OK. That's it for me. Anyone else with additional questions or commentary? That's what Marie. Um, in terms of just to kind of riff off what Tammy was saying, you guys were just saying, um, in my professional job, I had worked with communities uh, for state budget issues. But uh, one of the things that we found worked pretty well is um, an activity called the budget game. We ever came up with a better name for it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, you bring, uh, it's an in-person event, right? Where you have, people have to come in and that's been, the, a that's, that's a challenge, right? But it's an activity that is very different than someone standing, standing on a stage or um, doing a presentation. It's about sitting in small groups um, and looking at the various budget items to prioritize and getting the citizens to really understand how um, budget decisions are really hard. It's not, you know, it's not easy, right? People are like, well, just do this. Like, I just want you to, you know, make sure that the garbage gets picked up every week. Well, that's great, but you know, how much does that cost and how do we balance all that? Um, and there are a number of communities across the state that have had success, you know, in this uh, project. So if you want to talk more about it, I'm happy to share my experience. If you have. No one's ever defined me as shy. So I would, <laughs> I would look into anything like that. Yeah. You you know the community that's doing it, doing it well, and I'll, and I'll check with, with through CCM and Croc if they know other communities that, that have some good ideas. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to explore all Yeah. That. All right, I'll 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 uh, I'll see what I can put together and, and talk to you about that. What are we winning? Uh, nothing. <laughs> right? Hopefully a transparent budget process right. that would see increased right. participation in yeah. the budget. <laughs> Citizen buy-in. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this now, um, but in uh, item three on recreational opportunities, there's a, a little 
a note about expediting a new part-time position in the rec department. Um, I know that's in your town manager. It's also in the town manager report. I yep. don't know if you're ready to start talking about that, but um, it seems like there's a lot going on with rec. So there is. So uh, it's it was going to be brought on. I want to say like in April. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is a matter of moving up uh, a couple of months. Uh, Lisa's assured us we we've, we've saved some money and and salary uh, on a few levels uh, and more to come. Uh, so it, it's just a matter of moving that uh, forward a little quicker to get some through some help. There is getting pretty busy. We anticipate uh, with the ARPA funding of the rec programs. Uh, we anticipate a, a busy season and we don't want to bring that person in right when all those programs start. So I think it's a positive uh, for the town and for our, our very successful back department. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. And I look forward to hearing more about it. Um, in terms of well water, um, I know we approved a, um, a consultant report in our, I don't know, I think we're coming up on the six week uh, deadline for that report. Have we heard, has that come in yet? Or do we know when that's coming in? Yes, they're going to provide you with a report. I don't know when, but they will. Okay. Yeah, I, I think um, when it was presented to us, it, we were told it was going to be a pretty quick turnaround. Um, and I think for it the, has been. Our okay. attorney's happy with it. But again, that's, that's between yeah. him, but I, they, they yeah. are going to present that to you. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know. A lot of us are very interested to hear how that yep. that's going to work out. Um, overall, I, I did want to um, give my commentary that I was very impressed with how you put all this together for us. Thank you very much. Um, I think it was great to see you know each of our goals laid out like this with an update on how things were going. I thought this was um, packed full of really good information without being dull. So thank you very much. No one's ever described me as dull. No, I, I, so, no, I, would, I would say thank you to my staff. You know, a lot of them I needed to um, tap, tap them uh, specifically for obviously some of the detail, but um, yes, um, I'm, and I'm happy to do it. And, and my plan is uh, to keep this updated yeah. uh, and moving forward. It'll be easier for me. Yeah. Uh, so we ripped it all out and now I, now I can just jot down notes and keep it updated and, and provide it to you when you need it. Still. And I know uh, the, the chair had asked me to do something along those lines uh, early on. So uh, now we have it and we'll go. Yeah, thank you. Right. Any other questions from council members? I want to, oh, okay. ask, go ahead. Only one other on uh, to expand on what uh, Katie was saying with the water. When we get that report from the consultant, what is the clearly defined next step in time to? I don't have that in front of you right now. Uh, Tammy, um, I think you have to decide that. Let me put it that way. I don't want to, you have to decide that. They'll, I'm sure they'll present you with options, uh, whether to progress or move forward uh, with them uh, is my guess. Okay. Um, and then from the perspective of the Talent Water Commission, um, you know, Connecticut water is the one that goes basically down Old Post that would handle the Old Post uh, yeah. Mountain Spring area. And they would also be the ones that would handle anything that was on the, the Crystal Lake area. I know we had talked in the past about what was the, the fate of Holland Water. Um, and we haven't really heard anything from Connecticut Water in regards to quality issues over here. Now, because Holland Water is ours, that's why we pursued the grant and the um, consultant re review, et cetera, because that is our own local utility. But is the Water Commission doing anything to talk to Connecticut Water about expanding services? How does that know at this point? Would that be the Water Commission that does that? Or would that be? You're saying that, that they would expand their line? Well, that they would have to in order to handle any of the issues that we have on Old Post, Mountain Spring, those areas down um, up 74, yeah. and then down the Crystal Lake area, like to encapsulate the fire station and the issues that are further down. All of that has to be done through Connecticut Water. That is not a Holland Water um, company area. So, have we started any conversations? Is there any interest there? 
we are we are in discussion and on a bi-weekly meeting to include today on um, Tollins selling the Tollin water to Connecticut water. Um, we are not a water company here in the town and the water commission um, certainly has um, lost some inertia and uh, they didn't want to sell it as I'm told uh, a long time ago or years ago, a few years ago and now realize that that might not have been the best move as there's a lot of um, infrastructure costs that lie in our future uh, that the town uh, just cannot uh, it's the town is not a water company and it's going to be some great expenses uh, ahead for us and a lot of difficult decisions to retain uh, said water company uh, so we are on a bi-weekly to move forward we are at a point now where myself Bev uh, Mike Wilkinson and, and our attorney are going to look at uh, next steps uh, in that regard and with a meeting scheduled not next Tuesday but the following Tuesday the 27th uh, prior to that we'll meet again with our meeting with council and see where we are on that if there's going to be expansion in any part of town, um, we would need it to be Connecticut water as opposed to college, uh, college water. Okay, so that uh, leads me to the question of if this sale were to go through, right, and Tallinn water were to be purchased by Connecticut water, what does that do to not only the quote we already received um, for the work and the vineyards, which was under Holland Water, what did that do to um, to that process? Because Connecticut Water is not eligible for the grant that we applied for, or the loan subsidization program that we applied for. That, that's something we would have to uh, look at and work through. Uh, but again, if if there were water were to be brought out there, would Connecticut Water would, I think, would be the ones that would have to handle that project. And we would literally have to hire staff just to handle a water project uh, of that size if we opted not to do a community well uh, up there. Um, so yeah, all things we have to consider. And 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 when we when we have those questions, then I'm sure they'll be put on council's plate uh, to determine the answers to them. I'd probably add next steps, at least from my perspective, is when the report comes out, it would be probably prudent to send it to Bev and to the Water Commission so that they're aware. And if there's any discussions or plans for potential action or even having a joint special meeting, to have that discussion and have a very listed conversation about these next steps, I think is prudent. Yep. Uh, I think there's one other thing I can mention. I do have some, yeah. Um, concerns that Councilman Nuccio mentioned about the Connecticut countryside and just what's going forward with that. I know I think it's in one of our communications, not to undercut um, that there was an invitation um, for the four town group, I think at the end of the next month, maybe the 30th, is that right? I don't remember. So at the end, I think of the next month, there's an invitation for a regional event regarding this four town um, economic development group. So I think that's beneficial. Uh, there's one other point. I think I'll open the floor to any other questions or comments from Council Member Percy for me. Concludes conversation. Yeah. No, I just concur with Councilman uh, Councilman Murray's mentions of how thorough, thorough everything was. Great job. It was very detailed. And hoping for bigger and better going forward too. <laughs> I'll try to for us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all, all the thanks. Next time staff. we expect me. I will accept none of the thanks. All the staff. Yeah. The rocket. Yep. <laughs> Right. I would assume that we'd have another one in June, right? Yes. Because this is June to, June and December, I would think. June. Yes, probably shortly after the, the budget cycle is completed and finalized. Hopefully, we'll be in if another, in another review. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So that, that'll be good. It'll be a good benchmark to see how things go. <laughs> All right. That brings us to 8.6, which is appointments to vacancies on various municipal boards and commissions. We have three reappointments and one new appointment. So I would entertain a motion to approve those as outlined in 8.6A through 8.6B. So moved. So by Councilman Nuccio, is there a second? Second. Okay. Second by Councilman check. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is unanimous. Old business, we have none. So item 10 is the report of the town manager. Again, <laughs> take, it, take it away, Brian. If you want to right. give a quick update, or if you want a quick breather, I know I think I think I do not. Members, <laughs> okay. Let me run through a couple of things if that's all right. Yeah. 
Um, just, just to keep you uh, notified, prior to any, any snow event, um, I meet personally with um, DPW and public safety on uh, what to expect, where we are preparation-wise, really just touching base to make sure uh, we're set with staffing, any events, you know, anything that we need to know. Uh, just, I know we've never discussed it, but I want you to know that's, that's how we handled it in previous uh, in places where I was, uh, just to have a, a, a real solid conversation prior to each and every event. Uh, Cybersecurity wise, I don't know if I had mentioned this already, uh, Noreen has uh, connected with the National Guard and they're going to do a uh, scrub down of our uh, cybersecurity around um, emergency management, around uh, uh, registrars and, and elections, just everything uh, to see where we stand. Uh, she attended a, a, a cybersecurity event with uh, emergency management and Homeland Security uh, earlier in the month, or was it early, later last month, I can't remember. Um, and they offered that service. We're taking them up on it as it happened today at this, the CCM, Connecticut Conference of Municipalities uh, meeting. They encouraged all the towns to consider taking advantage of the National Guard cybersecurity stuff. We are ahead of the curve uh, and already on it. Um, touching back on some things, the festival lights, the, 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 the tree lighting. Uh, I, I want to thank all the staff, the PCC, DBW, Talon Fire, the CERT team, and the, the state police for everything and, and making it smooth and all of you. Uh, that attended as well. Uh, that was fantastic. As I said earlier, we're, we are boosting up that uh, uh, recreation department employee uh, by a couple of months or a few months. We have two openings in DPW that were we had applicants for. They're in the process of trying to get them on board now. Uh, the assistant human services director uh, informed me this morning that she will be leaving uh, town service for a dream job. Uh, so we'll look at some strategies uh, around that uh, moving forward. That Maureen? That would be Maureen. That's quite a loss. Um, and as you can see, the collection of revenue is in line or better than where we've been. That's, that just keeps, we do really well in this town on that. Um, solar projects, you know, we're, it's, it's, it's not as easy as you would think. Uh, we're looking at, um, we're looking at a lot of things. I'm really, you know, uh, or Bev and Megan are really getting tired of me asking, you know, not why can't, why can, uh, but they're doing great with it. No, I don't think I have any other notes. That's it. I'm here for questions. Open the floor to questions from council members. Councilman Murray. So I um, sent an email. I had some questions regarding the fiscal report in the back and. Um, Thank you, Lisa. It sounds like, thank you, Brian, that a lot of my questions did get answered. Um, so those get put into the minutes, right, Steve? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that can be, can be shared. I can make sure on that happens yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, thank you. I, uh, Lisa gave us, or gave me anyway, the balance for the tax stabilization fund. Um, and the CNRE, um, that, that. so Lisa, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still a little bit confused on your notes for charges for current services. Um, you say we're estimated to be on target. Um, the current revenues exceed the budgeted amount by 22,380. This amount should be reduced by 200,942. So I think um, my confusion is how can we reduce 22,000 by 200,000? 200, I think that's really the crux of my question. I know it's it's very confusing. Um, and, and, and I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. You. Many, many years ago, we set up the Ambulance Reserve Fund, which is a capital fund, separate fund altogether. However, the town bills for ambulance calls and services um, that we respond to or send AMR out to or, or call for paramedic assistance, things like that. So there are fees that are charged for those services and the town collects those fees. Now, Part of those services have to be paid for with some of those fees that are collected. You know, um, 
to pay for the paramedics that come out, the, um, the outsourced services. So what we do throughout the year is we collect all of those fees in the general fund. However, not all of those fees stay in the general fund. What happens is there is $39,140. That's the particular budget for those revenues. That is money set aside to help pay for some of the secretarial administrative costs uh, for our secretary over at the fire department. So it offsets the mill rate for what is used um, for her services and for her salary. So what happens is the only amount that stays in the general fund as of the end of the year is 39,140. But in the meantime, we have collected a little over 200,000 plus so far um, for, those, for those fees. So right now, if you were to look at one of our revenue reports, the numbers are inflated because they include that extra couple hundred thousand dollars worth of revenues that are gonna come out at the end of the year. We don't account for them separately in a, in the different fund. We, we collect it all there. It's been that way for the last, I don't know, 15 years plus um, before me, but, um, what we do is we, we pay out the paramedic fees that come in um, for the bills for those. We, at the end of June, we settle up everything and move all of those revenues into the capital fund for ambulance reserve and bring that balance down. So each year, each quarter, when I usually do this financial report, I always put a caveat on the financial statement that says, Although this revenue says you have 300,000, you really don't. And this is the amount it needs to be reduced by. And I try to do the analysis, taking all that into account. So if someone were to look at that account, they would think, oh, we have all this money. What do you mean we still you know, have to collect more? And, and that's, not the, you know, that's not the case because that money really doesn't belong there. Okay. Um, does that help at all? Yeah. Or? I, I think what really helped me just so you know is is you talking about how um the collections are two hundred and forty thousand to date um and need to be reduced by two hundred thousand. That thank right. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Um and the other question I had was about public safety. Um, I, I, I could be remembering this incorrectly and I apologize because I didn't go no, back. You, you remembered it correctly. So yeah, I, I feel like at the beginning of the year when we were doing the budget um, that uh, we were worried that this line item was going to well exceed what we had budgeted for it. And now uh, you're saying we're going to have a, a savings of 150000 on this line item. So I'm just not sure how that happened. What happened was as of the end of um, last year when we were developing the budget, the state police provide us with projections of what the, the cost will be. Um, that was based on a full police trooper force of many officers at the top of the range. They're, they're paid the highest salary because they had been there for many years. At that point, we were not aware of officers leaving and we were told that that the um, certain they were working on fringe benefit costs everything else and that there was a chance that there may not be enough money when i was developing the budget i decided to do the wait and see rather than asking to add the money into the budget so we we took that chance and, and i'm glad we did so what has happened now is that after the budget was passed, after the year was started, we had two officers leave. One retired and um, the other one moved into another um, unit. He got a promotion and moved, moved on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those two were paid very high salaries. They were at pretty much close to the top of the range. 
that created substantial savings because they were replaced with lower level, you know, younger staff that are paid much less. In addition to that, the state um, worked on the fringe benefit rate, and we started out with a fringe benefit rate around 78 point something percent. Now for years, that fringe benefit rate has been close to over 100% at times. It's been, it did come down. We were advised by the state that it was gonna be 78 point something percent. And after the year started, they had their, I guess their negotiations and adjusted it and it came down to about almost 50% rather than 78%. So that on top of the savings from the troopers leaving creates close to $150,000 in um, expenditures that will not be expended for that purpose. Now, there may be some needs within the organization going forward for certain things. Um, some of that may be used for other things, but I, I don't see all of it being used unless an emergency comes up. So what would happen at the end of the year is those funds, depending on where we are with other expenditures, other revenues, will be turned back to fund balance. Great, and I, I did, um... Thank you very much for giving us this overview. I think one of the uh, most notable takeaways for me was that although our current fiscal year budget uh, did call for using $268,000 from fund balance, that right now it's anticipated that we will not be actually withdrawing any money from fund balance, but there'll be a small deposit of what, about 40,000, 35, 40? It's all going to depend on how the year ends. I mean, we, we're just starting winter now. Um, you know, we were kind of on low end budgeting for different supplies for snow removal and things like that. I think it, it's, you know, by the end of December, de definitely by March, we'll have a better feel for things. Um, so, so time will tell as far as that goes. Well, thank you. I know that was the, big talking point when we were working on yeah. the budget. And, and the amount of um, fund balance that was used, it, it was 200,000 for fund balance. The other 68,000 was for a uh, restricted funds for debt service because we were trying to help phase in the cost of debt as it would increase based because of the Birch Grove project. So we had moved some money from the debt service fund and, and just kind of offset it um, to help alleviate the uh, impact on mill rate for the new debt coming on. So that that's what was there. So, you know, time will tell, we'll see if we'll be using anything, but it, you know, if we're lucky and fortunate, excuse me, um, I think it's a good thing if we don't have to use the fund balance. Thank you very much, Lisa. I appreciate it. Uh, You're welcome. Really answering all my questions as always. Thank you, Lisa. Any other questions for council members regarding the manager's report? Um, so Brian, the first page of the of the report talks about the assessor's office and personal property declarations being sent to um to the businesses. Yep. I am wondering if you can talk a little bit about how we have done on standardizing that review um for our businesses. First, second, um, what have we done or are we doing to educate the small businesses on the filing? And if they don't file, how it is estimated and what their process is for that? Because um, I got countless calls from small businesses last time this occurred um, about being uh, taxed on things that they didn't even own because it was just assumed that their business would own it. So, uh, so. I have not taken a granular look at that part yet beyond having a discussion uh, with Jason after hearing the same types uh, of complaints. Um, he addressed them along the lines of people aren't always forthright and honest um, or timely with their uh, reporting to him and then the town has to uh, do something when someone doesn't report uh, or clearly under reporting what they what they're uh, 
values are that he has to take action. I can look at the standardization. I, I do have concern with that as well. And I have brought it to him. Um, and I'll look at the education process too. I don't know if, if we have that on our website. I don't think we do right now, but I think if we're sending out the um, the declarations, some education material with it might help. Would be very helpful, okay. especially for the small businesses. And if there's an appeal process, if they don't send something in and they're um, hit with an expected, this is what we expect you to have. What's the process for them to be able to adequately appeal that? You got it. I see. All right. Any other questions? I have one more. One more comment. Go for it. Or a question for me. <laughs> no. Uh, I love the engagement. I'm so happy working here uh, with everybody. So um, I, I think I'm the luckiest person every day I walk out that door. Uh, I love the questions. Uh, we haven't gone through the budget yet. <laughs> I haven't yet. I can't wait. Uh, so I, I really enjoy it. So I, I thank you all. Um, I don't want any of you to leave uh, council. So but I understand that'll happen. Um, and then I'll like even better. So <laughs> <laughs> that's it. All right. Thank you, Brian. That brings us to 11 adoption of the minutes. I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes that as laid out one by one. So moved. Is there a second? A second. No further discussion. All those in favor say goodbye by saying aye. 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 But unanimous. I have 12 as correspondence to council. We have uh, six. Emails come in uh, since November 23rd through today, uh, one on walkability and public transportation, one on daycare center tax abatement, uh, another which was an invitation to the Fort Town Summit, which was mentioned earlier, uh, an invitation to the tree lighting, which happened uh, last week, uh, an invitation, oh, sorry, um, another email on pollution-free cooking, and an email on contaminated foods. Yes. I don't know what any of you guys, but we are getting spammed the hell out of us. Mm -hmm. um, is that something like IT before had done something a couple of years ago where they kind of reduced that? But man, I'm like, you're on your town email? Yeah. I'm like spammed. Like, That's spammed. odd. I get absolutely nothing. I can tell you really? we were under yeah. siege yesterday morning uh, with cyber attacks. Uh, and IT uh, in between Noreen and town of South Windsor did an excellent job. Uh, right up until this morning, there was disruptions defending that. Uh, they've made some changes. If uh, if you go overseas, you might not be able to access your email. <laughs> and I yeah. proved that today. Oh, yeah. I'm you. fine with that. <laughs> Always going overseas. And forget about town business when you're there, please. Uh, so. I know we've been under attack. We've done an amazing job. I don't know about the spam, but I'm I'm, I'm happy to ask. I can tell you, yeah. I don't. I get none. Really? Mm -hmm. I, honestly, I'm deleting like five plus a day. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, it was an example. Really? Yeah. You guys aren't getting it? Well, I get like you a, know, as a chair because I like still I get, get, I get, I get, I get junk. Mail. Junk mail. Depends on where you're five. If you put your email out there on certain things, like is it attached to your Facebook page? Is it no, attached? it's okay. not. But like people find me, I have to forward stuff all the time from a legislative perspective. But no, like these are. I did get more emails when I was chair, but this is like, let me, let me see if I can find someone that deleted. Like I'm deleting like five plus a day. If I get one a month, one a month, maybe. Okay. I'll ask Noreen. Utility ban billing management, enrolled to become this, new portable heating things, mm -hmm. amazing boomerang. If I don't get that. Um, no, you're you're, you're getting hit first. <laughs> this is all just, that was just today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, not nine, nine today. No, nine I today. Kind of Yesterday, <laughs> probably about six or seven. Like I'm getting slit. Um, stop sending me this stuff. Noreen did a great this. job. I'll ask her. Okay. <laughs> all right. I didn't know if it was everybody if it was me. Apparently, it's just me. I do get plenty of my junk inbox, but it seems to be well, well circulated. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Why do you? Why do you? I'm like, I don't need that. I don't need that either. I'm not buying a boomerang. I just want cloth to John. Can you forward me that boomerang? Boomerang. The boomerang. Do not forward me. It could be I got the same one today. So it's, it's, all right. See, so it's the boomerang. Yeah. So it's so it's older. Maybe it's long longer term email address. And then I just hit there to do that. Yeah. That. I don't know, man. But, but I thought it was like everybody. I thought we like they'll draw the spam. Yeah. 
All right, that brings us to 13 chairpersons report. Uh, did have one person show up for the chair hour, very robust conversation about energy efficiency. Uh, they usually send in you know, communication to the council on a lot of these topics. Um, but they did have some requests for information. They were curious about who had built the uh, current solar array over near River Park and what is the status of that project and any plans to expand to other open spaces similar. I think you've covered that, Brian, in the past. I would love I mentioned that as well. Uh, they have talked about any opportunities to work with Grog on uh, regional composting. We're trying to get composting in the town, like the, I think it's West Park Burger. Oh, yeah. That's like the, the bucket out. that's just composted materials. Um, but no, they, they just generally had some conversations about, you know, avoiding natural gas, um, you know, use of certain chemicals and water. You know, it was, it was it the end, but it was a pretty robust conversation. Uh, can I pause you for one second, Mr. Sure. Chair? I forgot to mention that uh, Bev, Megan, and I, was that it? Went on a field trip around town. Um, oh, Dave. No, Dave. Dave. Dave, yeah, Dave, 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 yeah. How do I think? <laughs> and Dave. Maybe it was uh, two months ago. The four of us. <laughs> we did a field trip around town uh, to include a, a bunch of places. The dump, really, Campbell, parts of Campbell Farm, uh, and, and all in evaluating where we can put uh, solar, creative places uh, to do solar. And it's, and it's an ongoing. Uh, at the same time, I looked at some other things that are in the capital of improvements uh, while, while I was in the neighborhood, but we were really going at it. I forgot about to mention the field trip, that's all. Okay. So I think in tandem with that too, I think it's like Councilor Murray has brought up in the past, they also mentioned the possibility of municipally located charging stations for electric vehicles, whether it's at mm -hmm. Town Hall or, or on that well. system. Yeah. Yeah. And their grants. Yep, and we're, we're going after grants for that. <laughs> All right, and that is it for me. So for that, we'll move on to 14 inches communication. Actually, sorry, one other thing. We did get a communication from State Representative Nuccio and Senator-elect Gordon about having a, a leave a meet and greet or a uh, free legislative, legislative discussion, um, hopefully at maybe our next meeting, if that is in the works, or if we have a, I think we have a pretty light meeting and we'll for the second one outside of the six month review process for you. And I guess I can also share that with the chairperson's report is that we are having a special meeting next Tuesday to do the first steps of that. And I think we'll have a subsequent one the week after. Um, that's all pending. But yes, we have a request for that. So that'll be something to consider. But it got hairy, get trying to get everybody in the room at the same time. So I went and met with I I made an appointment with, with uh Senator Gordon okay. uh and met with him in my office, just the two of us one on one uh, ahead of that. Okay. So, but I'm happy to let's do it. All right. I'm sorry, Steve. What was the 20th again? Uh, the 20th, it was just sent out via email. There's an invitation for it. It's a special meeting. It'll be fully remote executive session, but it's for the town manager review because Brian's hitting his six month marker. So that'll be at 7 p.m. And then after that, you know, we'll be working with SGR again on that. And next week, the week after, I think we'll be setting a date for the follow up for based off of that first meeting. And we're still meeting on the 27th or that's the intent that's the intent maybe well okay. if we have if we might have a, a lighter meeting that would be an opportune time to mm -hmm. have the uh, legislative update and then maybe have an executive session within that week or in that period of time depending on how the first meeting on the 20th goes to coordinate and have the full review if brian's looking forward to i can tell <laughs> i am actually all right, that brings me to item four, or brings us to item 14, rather, communications and petitions from council members. Um, one I wanted to share, and actually I shared it with, I believe, uh, Town Manager Foley and Vice Chair Regan. I had seen the CCM civility pledge. Um, it seems to be a fairly informal process when I communicated and reached out to CCM about it. So it's essentially a one-page document. There's a website I'll share with council members. Um, but if you have any interest in signing on to it, you can fill it out, put in your hand signature, title, and which town you represent, and you can communicate it back to CCM. and. I think they're doing kind of promotions of the towns that have signed on. So I would just encourage that to members of the council, especially going into, I think it was alluded to, the budget season can get pretty hairy and pretty contentious. So stepping in with a good foot for, forward on that would be good. So that's my petition to everyone. Uh, is there any other petitions or communications? That's what you to check. I just want to say, I know there was a huge fire in Varan a few days ago. And um, I just want to commend the fire department. 
for helping out over there and the surrounding towns that helped that. Um, I just wanted to make note that it was been a really long day. So. Yeah, no, definitely once we've seen the news, it's good that Red Cross helped out those families. I was surprised how intense it was that it was impacting other houses. And they also went to Coventry to do a pretty involved house structure mm -hmm. fire. I saw recently as well. Yeah. I think it was like the day after, yeah. shortly, yeah. shortly yeah. after that, except for the rough start of December for them. Yeah, yeah. But that's all I have. Any other questions, Councilman Murray? I, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to Bruce and the rec department. Um, rec basketball started this week for the kids and uh in my house it was a huge success uh, which i always appreciate but I, I also sat on the bleachers with other parents who were very happy so numbers are way up yeah yeah they are. um yeah but bruce had it all planned out and he managed the parents and he managed the kids and I, he was doing as always a great job so i just wanted to give a shout out Thank you, Councilman Murray. Any other communications or petitions? I think the other thing I'll just add when you talk about the budget, just as a reminder, the budget schedule is out. Uh, I mean, there are some additional meetings. I think the, uh, we received a memo, so there's a few meetings coming up on Tuesday, the 17th of January. There's probate, assessors, library, collector, collector of revenue. Thursday, the 19th of January is public works, human services, the registrar of voters. Monday, January 23rd is the fire department, town clerk, and law enforcement. And Wednesday, the 25th, is planning, building, recreation, finance, administrative services. But there's a full calendar out there. So as you're starting to promote it, keep an eye on, on your dates and have the time available for the various hearings and discussions. But these aren't for, these aren't council meetings, right? You can go to them. Yeah. Yeah, you can still go to them. Okay. They're just additional meetings yeah. if you have okay. any interest. Thank you. Seeing no other communications or petitions. We'll move to item 15, which is public list of participation on any subject within the jurisdiction of the town council with a three minute limit. If you're on Zoom, you can hit the star nine, if you're on mobile device or raise hand function, or if you're in the public, you can approach the table. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Going once, going twice. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 8 23 p.m. So moved by Councilman Nuccio. Is there a second? Yes, I'll second. Second by Councilman Murray. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you.